Hello there, and welcome to INTPs and Money. I am your host, Christian Rivera. Thank you for being here. And uh, I want to talk about your relationship as an INTP to money. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to be doing this screen capture style, making sure that we cover the whole screen here, and uh, go through this presentation that I put together around INTPs and money. So we're going to talk about... Um, uh, limiting beliefs. We're going to talk about um, all sorts of uh, reframes that you can make as an INTP to start to think about money in a different way. This is not like a get rich quick kind of thing. This is not uh, shysty stuff. This is not about uh, tricking you or changing your mind in any kind of a way. This is about encouraging you to uh, get out there and, um, you know, getting a positive relationship with money is another good uh, way of doing that. And I, I've covered that in other courses in terms of my cosmic calibration course about intuition and uh, other other courses that I have that talk about um, expanding your awareness and having a positive relationship with money will help you expand your awareness. So just a side note that it is springtime here when I'm recording this and there are usually birds just outside my window. So I apologize for the background noise. I'm in an apartment. There's not a lot I can do about it. So hopefully you can bear with me and that'll be okay. Uh, so let's dive right into it. More money, more problems is usually the case, but we're not going to cover it. We're not going to focus too much on it being a problem. We're going to actually focus on it being something that's going to be helpful to you because money can't buy you happiness, but it can make you awfully comfortable while you're being miserable. You know, and if you're if you're having a hard time uh, emotionally, you're having some relationship issues, you're having all sorts of other problems in your life. Uh, money can be something that helps you to focus for a little bit. Focus on making money. Go just do a job for a while. Uh, focus on trying to hit a, a benchmark or trying to make your life more comfortable in terms of money. You know, money and its connections to people and all sorts of other philosophies are something we're going to talk about and how we can start to treat money as something that is separate from that and something that's actually a positive in our lives. So we're going to, what we're going to cover the first part here on YouTube, we're going to cover uh, what is money making money, INTP tendencies around money and INTP blind spots around money. And then we're going to move on for those who are here on the website. What we're going to cover is reframing beliefs, assessing your needs as an INTP, INTP partners and money. If you have a relationship or you're going to eventually get into a relationship, how can you and your partner build a better relationship around money together and then casting a vision for yourself? Um, and then lastly, we're going to cover uh, bonus material around money and the Enneagram. Now I've been doing some Enneagram work with a client of mine and I've been learning a lot through that process. And I made some connections between how some INTPs based on their Enneagram type may treat money and the relationship to money a little bit differently. And we're going to cover that as well. And I should have mentioned that casting a vision for yourself is, is all about thinking about the future and how you can have a better relationship to the future via money. So let's start with the first section here about INTPs and money. Anyone who tells you money can't buy you happiness never had any. And Samuel L. Jackson knows a thing or two about a thing or two. So I trust his opinion when it comes to this sort of thing. And, um, and, and in my case too, I haven't been a rich person by any means, uh, but money can make you more comfortable as it mentioned in the previous uh, quote that I put up. You know, money can get you to a certain place, a certain type of happiness. And we're going to talk about that further in the presentation. So let's start about what, let's start with what is money and uh, thinking about money as objectively as we can, you know, money is an evolution of trade barter systems. And it doesn't mean that trade and barter systems can't be something that you use, especially as you get into uh, freelancing in your life, or you get into any other sort of community situations that it's totally okay to trade if that makes sense. I do trades all the time for, uh, for my type of work or for, uh, consulting for, you know, someone does some work for me as, as a result. So uh, right now I'm doing an apprenticeship <clears throat> with my, my friend who she is doing, uh, some, some note-taking work for me for some of my courses. And I am giving her some consulting around, uh, personality type profiling and stuff like that. So trading is still very much a valuable thing, 
but money is basically an evolution of that. It's an intuitive concept that assigns value to work, goods, or services. So usually you think about it as physical bills or coins. And uh, my friend Antonia Dodge and uh, Joel Mark Witt of Personality Hacker referred to it as green bio survival tickets. They have some great podcasts around uh, personality type relationships to money, and they have their own course around money as well. So I would suggest taking a look at that. Um, and, and, you know, thinking about it as a currency we've agreed upon that stands in the place of having to make specific trades for goods. And just thinking about it as that, if you try to drill down further, you're going to get to a place of absurdity and you're going to dismiss money altogether. That's just what we do as INTPs when we clean slice to the point of futility. Meaning if you're, you know, you're, you're deconstructing a salad, for example, and you're starting to look at it as like, oh, this is just leaves and dressing and uh, croutons and raisins or apples and putting these separate components. And then if you take the components and you start to slice an apple and you're like, oh, this is just a tiny little piece. And then you start to slice that and you're like, it's just the skin of the apple. This is kind of useless. You start to get drilled down to a point where it's not useful anymore. And uh, so to be careful of that, using your introverted thinking as an INTP of trying to look at money for um, what it isn't, which is, you know, something that's completely absurd and useless. Obviously it is useful and uh, it's your relationship to it that can always improve. So uh, there's a quote from Einstein that says like to focus on making things simple, but not simpler. So I'm, I'm not saying that verbatim, but it's something to that effect to make things simple, but not simpler. And that's a very much true to life idea around using introverted thinking in a way that is not clean slicing too much. You have to know where the stopping point is. And then lastly, thinking of money as digital currency creates the opportunity to think of money at a distance for better or worse and earn money by whatever means we're capable of. So very much like in video games and you see the numbers go up, you can now start to think of digital currency. I'm not just talking about Bitcoin or any of those things, but I'm talking about the numbers that are just existing on your bank statement, numbers that are on your digital, you know, that's on your phone. You can start to think of it as like just accruing points or, you know, kind of trying to get a high score and then having to allocate, allocate those things for bills and all sorts of other things. So making it, having a digital uh, usage of currency is possibly going to make it easier for a lot of INTPs, but it's also easier for you to ignore um, money and maybe not take it seriously because you're putting it at a further distance as well. So be careful of that also. So what are some ways that you could start to make money as an INTP with little permission? Because as an INTP, the perceiver part of us, especially, uh, wants to do things on our own esteem. INTPs, we really appreciate autonomy. We appreciate doing things um, our way. So how can we start to make money with as little permission as possible? One is you can start to buy and sell goods online. You can buy from a, uh, uh, you can buy something in person at like a yard sale and then sell it online or go to a specialty shop or a, 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 some like a dollar store. And you can usually find things that you can maybe bundle them together and then sell them online as a pack. You can sell on Amazon, you can sell on eBay, you can sell on Etsy if you're making physical goods or find something unique and interesting. You know, there's always that opportunity to do that. You got to think about shipping. You got to think about those costs. But essentially, if you can do that, and I would look at Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, as an example of someone who basically talks about buying and selling all the time. He's done it pretty early um, in his in his YouTube channel. So I would just look for that, like Gary V, V-E-E, uh, buying and selling, and you'll find all sorts of great advice on how to start doing that for yourself. Um, you can do gig work, such as food delivery or taxi service services, you know, Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates. Um, there's Uber, there's Lyft, things that I've done in the past few years because I had to kind of reset my life. And when things were really rough, it was lucky to have that to go to. Kind of messed up my back being in the car for a few hours at a time. Um, and I have an ankle issue. So it was really hard for me to get in and out of the car for food delivery. So if that's something that you can do, especially if you're young, you know, do it. And it's something you can do on your own time. And you can listen to whatever music you want in the car or podcasts and uh, work at your own pace. You can clock off at any time. You know, it's something you have very little permission to to start and stop. You just maybe have to have a license and all sorts of little bits of documentation and a car and all of that stuff. 
Um, or you can start to work full-time or part-time in a field of interest or just to make some cash. Um, so you can go, you know, when we're going to talk about vision casting later, but if you have a general idea of something that you're interested in, it doesn't have to be specific. Don't fixate on something specific, but if you know that you want to work in the field of science or that you're interested in food or you're interested in, um, uh, design, you know, you can start to go in that general direction. Uh, even if that means working as a janitor, janitor at a music studio, if you're someone that's interested in music, um, that's a story that, uh, I've heard talked about with Prince. Prince basically started to become a janitor at a, uh, recording studio so that he can, you know, find his way in, make really build relationships and then be able to record at those studios. So think about the path of where you think you want to go. At least right now, the path's going to change. Don't worry about again, pre precision, just what could be interesting and start to work towards that. And we're going to talk a little bit later about building a resume and all of that stuff. Cause that's, that definitely involves more permission than just buying and selling or gig work, but it's something that you can make a decision to do and start to do on your own. And then next would be to provide research, virtual assistant, or transcription services. The research one in particular could be really interesting for INTPs, especially if you're a five in the Enneagram research and getting down the rabbit hole of something, uh, in particular is a natural skill set that we have as INTPs. And if you're able to provide that service to someone else, then that's incredibly valuable because not everyone has the brain that you have. So if you can provide that to someone else and say, Hey, I will research problems for you. I will look up all of this data around this, uh, around this topic, or I will, uh, you know, uh, grab whatever information you need to write an article or something like that. You know, you can reach out to blogs, you can reach out to YouTube channels and say, Hey, I know you probably do some research when it comes to this, these videos you do, or these articles you write. And I would love to assist you in doing those research and you can charge, I don't know, 15 bucks an hour to do that 10 to $15, depending on how much they can afford. Um, and, and you know, that's something that's, that's pretty decent money to at least get you going. Um, virtual assistant services and transcription services are something that maybe FJs would have a, a better time with IFJs in particular, but if it's something that you feel like you could try, uh, you can offer that to people who are already established entrepreneurs or people who are trying to build a business and trying to basically make things easier. And that's the core here is like, if you're able to offer something that makes someone's life easier, they'll be willing to pay for it. So that's where you can focus there. Next is you can stream your talent or hobby on Twitch or YouTube. This is not an immediate return. Uh, getting ad revenue from Twitch or YouTube is not a life changing thing by any means. There's not a lot of money that comes from that. But over time, you can build an audience, you can do affiliate links and sell to that audience, you can make your own courses, or you can um, uh, make unique products and sell to those uh, fans over time. And, um, you know, it's kind of amazing that that things that I never thought would be popular are popular video games, Dragon Ball uh, YouTubers exist, and they're making decent money. And uh, entertainment writers are now doing YouTube videos. And you don't even have to do have your face on screen. Um, you can do screen capture stuff like this, or you can do, um, stock footage, stuff like that. You don't have to be on screen. You don't have to have the perfect setup. You don't have to per have the perfect camera. There's usually a lot of ways that you could do that pretty easily and then provide creative services. If you're someone that's an illustrator, maybe you're starting to get to know Photoshop. Maybe you're starting to get to know video editing, you know, as a way to learn, you can start to offer some services, simple services, the things that you know how to do, uh, for people. A lot of people are trying to create podcasts. If you're doing audio editing, you can do that sort of thing and just offer simple edits for flat rate. Say like, Hey, I'll do 50 bucks an episode or 30 bucks an episode. And, um, you know, just put the offer out there and see if that will hit. And then as you learn, as you take on gigs, you will have things that you're kind of forced to learn and you'll develop your skills that way. So to me, I think that's incredibly valuable for anyone who's trying to make money with little permission. And then lastly, you can offer to consult based on your skill or hobby. So like I mentioned with the Twitch streaming, if you're a video game expert, you're an expert in Lord of the Rings, you're an expert in uh, some sort of, um, I don't know, food or some kind of entertainment or um, uh, some strategy in, in gaming or, or creativity or illustrating, 
and you can draw something for someone, which I should add to the creative services. You can do illustration. If you're an illustrator, do caricatures, or some people have sold fan art to each other, but offering to consult based on your skill or hobby and just providing very similar to the research, you're providing your expertise on something to someone who needs it, right? The idea is like you have the key to the treasure and they have the treasure and you have to combine those two things for both of you to be able to get access to the treasure. So what are some INTP tendencies around money? One is that perceivers tend to spend first, then focus on responsibilities. And sometimes we can have a lot of judgment around that. And uh, that can be really hard for INTPs to allow ourselves to do that, especially when we're comparing ourselves to judges who are typically doing the opposite. They're focusing on their responsibilities first and then play second. But perceivers, like play is how we learn. So surrounding ourselves with interesting things. I've got stuff on my desk right here that are things that I look at and bring me joy. And I really, it, it is, uh, it gives me some spiritual and emotional ROI return on my investment and, uh, experiences, anything that INTPs, uh, or any perceiver, especially NPs, um, can, can invest in, you know, we have that, that, uh, tendency to want to invest in that expression for ourselves. And uh, there's, I'm here to say there's nothing wrong with that. We're going to cover more um, related to that as we go later in this presentation. But, um, but if we are okay with that, then we can start to really just allow ourselves to put the money where we want to put it and not feel like money is this taxing, um, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> um, uh, really awful thing that we just have to do when it's something that we can actually enjoy. And it's really about the permission to allow ourselves to enjoy. Um, I know that INTPs can be more easily responsible if they only have to worry about themselves in a very TI, since we lead with our introverted thinking as a dominant judging function. Um, that can mean that we can be very self-disciplined, especially with our introverted sensing as well. If we have other people to worry about, that can be frustrating. That can maybe put us into that wanting to spend on other people and other experiences and stuff like that kind of space. And that can create that push and pull between internal discipline and external play. Um, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that it's okay to spend more on your personal interests and wants as well. So that even if you live on your own and you're taking care of your space, that to still fill that space with color, to still fill that space with joy, to still be able to fill that space with things that you want. Don't make yourself broke as a result of it. Make some smart decisions, put, make a bucket of money somewhere, a separate account where this is the spending account. This is the responsibilities account. And having those things be kind of separate can just make it so that if the money runs out, the money runs out, but you still have to look at the numbers. Don't ignore the numbers. Those are very important. So what are some INTP blind spots around money? INTPs can see their relationship to money as the objective relationship to money. So if you have a thought, an ide idealization or a philosophy around money, be careful of conflating that opinion with the objective truth about money based on your experience, right? Because maybe you've seen money hurt people, you know, money is the root of evil, or only greedy people seek money, and it affects people, or it, that it's just paper, and you kind of clean slice to that absurdity that I was talking about. But your relationship to money is not just about money. That's about people's relationship to money. And that's about your relationship to people. And you're conflating that connection and skipping the middleman between yourself, people and money. And what you've seen happen to other people or what you've seen happen to yourself when it comes to money and um, money isn't doing anything. Money again, is just a green bio survival ticket or, or the digit on a screen. It's just, it's not doing anything. It's just there. It's our relationship to money, to money that can improve. So uh, at the same time, INTPs can assume that they have nothing to offer in exchange for money. And just like I said, in the last few slides, there's plenty that you can offer as an INTP. There's plenty that getting to know yourself as an INTP that allows you to see what you offer the world that is unique compared to anyone else. No one thinks like you do. Introverted thinking is a very unique process. Deduction, problem solving, interconnecting ideas, assessing beliefs. Those are all things that INTPs can do very, very well that other people have difficulties with. And if you can lend that whether that's through coaching, through tutoring, through uh, research, like I said, or, or 
explaining the nuances of differences between characters on a TV show or, um, you know, the, why this moment was important and this moment wasn't important or, um, you know, why this strategy works or that strategy doesn't work. You know, there's plenty of things that you can exchange for money as an INTP. It's just up to your imagination to allow yourself to give yourself permission to do it. Um, and, and because of, if you just kind of assume that you don't have anything to offer and you have this maybe negative relationship to the idea of money that INTPs can give up on it altogether, that you might give up on it altogether, that it's, um, too much work. It involves playing the social game, proving your worth, developing a skill or giving up personal time and autonomy. And I, I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, money is work and that's just something to accept. Um, that it's going to take time, it's going to take energy, it's going to take effort. And uh, that's sort of the the price we pay for being a part of a country or being a part of a civilization that we're not uh, living in dystopia <laughs> all the time. Uh, you know, money is the, the ticket to not have to deal with that intense dystopia. As much as we watch movies and maybe can fantasize about how we would survive in that situation, um, we probably wouldn't last very long. Uh, because we are pretty spoiled, <laughs> um, uh, involves playing the social game. Uh, and it's important to know that you're already playing the social game as an INTP. Uh, if you're choosing to not participate, you're just choosing last place. You don't really have a choice. The social game is just something that exists. So, you know, notice within yourself that if you're trying to avoid it altogether, you're just choosing last place. And, um, that sucks. And I'm, I'm, I'm sucks in a way that I feel for you. Cause I've done that. I've done that in school. I've done that in uh, so many situations where, because I felt incompetent in a situation, or I felt that, um, I, I didn't want to put in the effort that I just decided not to do it. And it turns out I was just choosing last place. And then, um, you know, sometimes you're going to have to prove your worth. Sometimes you're going to have to develop skills and give up your personal time and autonomy in order to get something to happen, you know, proving who you are is not necessarily about um, your relationship to yourself. It's not about having other people uh, judge you so much as it's just about showing that you're reliable or you have skills or that you're available or that you're um, willing to learn, right? Because the other person just, they don't know you, they especially don't know you as much as you do. So you're going to have to prove it and at least show it in what you've done. Maybe you have to do skills tests and, uh, you know, that's just, again, part of the game and you just have to kind of accept that that's part of it. Uh, developing a skill is also a part of this as well, that, um, developing skills, you know, means, doing something new and possibly uncomfortable. And especially if you're younger, giving up some personal time and autonomy is going to be part of that. Because as you're younger, you've got time to give up. Time is, you know, if you're not using your time, you're just lazing about, right? Um, I don't mean lazing as a judgment, but <laughs> if you're having, uh, you have time to give, then uh, that's part of the currency. And we're going to talk about that more later in the presentation as well. So, uh, and then lastly here on this section that INTPs can be self-critical about that desire and, uh, to spend an experience first. I know I can, um, especially as an Enneagram one. And, um, you know, you know, that it's that you can save when it's more logical to save money first and you try to honor that, but then you have this inner tension and pull towards wanting to just spend based on the first exciting thing that you find, right? So it's, it's just sort of accepting that these are the natural tendencies that you have and putting them in the right buckets, right? So, you know, put honor your, uh, uh, desire to save when it's time to save, honor your desire to spend when it's time to spend, have the different buckets for different things and, um, you know, focus on that. And then lastly, being careful of latching on to fads or risks or getting carried away with the excitement because it's new or creates connection. And I'm specifically referring to the recent stock market AMC situation, which I'm pretty sure a lot of those were INTPs. And I, uh, <laughs> um, what's important about this is to make sure that uh, very similar to the self-critical push and pull and wanting to spend on things that are interesting, that you find interesting, is to not spend so much that you're going to make yourself broke right? Like that's 
not healthy. <laughs> You're not, that's not a good idea to put your rent money on black or to put your rent money on red or to put your rent money on AMC. And just because it's some exciting internet thing that you're involved in and that you can have a story to tell around it, that's really another version of self-sabotaging uh, because you, this is a, these are immense risks to invest, get in the stock market and stuff like that. So don't invest anything that you're not willing to lose. Uh, that goes for marketing. If you're marketing your services and you're trying to buy ads, don't spend anything that you're not willing to lose because there's no guarantee of a return and um, it could all end in a, a short burst. I've heard so many stories after that, that realist, that, um, that uh, stock market investment situation where people lost, lost thousands of dollars because they thought that they were going to get a massive return out of it. And they just didn't find the right timing or they didn't know what to do and lost so much money. And, um, ended up going in the wrong direction. And uh, I don't want that to happen to you. So I want to make sure that you're aware as an INTP, especially with that extroverted feeling when something is new and exciting and especially creates connection on like Reddit as like this big fad of like, let's all spend money in the same place. Like you can get swept away with that. And I know as an INTP, we're like, I'm a robot, man. I don't get swept away by emotional things. You totally do. We totally do. It's absolutely possible. You're a human being. And the extroverted feeling inferior is particularly unconscious in our minds. So be careful of when you could be taken advantage of in that way, especially by someone you like or someone you appreciate could be trying to emotionally manipulate you. So this is the last bit of uh, around the YouTube section. I appreciate you for being here on YouTube. If you want to get the rest of this go to dopeintp.com. It's going to be available in the INTP advanced section, which is a uh, monthly membership for INTPs who want more uh, advanced content like this. And then I'm also going to make it its own standalone um, course that you can just buy on its own if you just want this um, on its own. So you can go ahead there, pick that up and um, I'll, I'll see you in the rest of the course. So thanks for listening if you're on YouTube and I'll catch you in the next video.